This is a short story of how the Jami FM radio production network was built with Finnish assistance in Twara, Tanzania. Initial planning started months earlier when we used our small cars to collect the production equipment donated by the Finnish broadcasting company and stored them in the cellar. After that, all audio equipment was checked thoroughly and all computers pre-installed from the XP operating system to the hardware drivers and specific audio production applications. We also made preliminary plans about how to divide all the rooms of the new radio house. For text processing, the open source application package OpenOffice was selected. For sound editing and level checking, there was another open source free program, the excellent Audacity multitrack editor. For building the radio playlists and for running audio on the air, the free version of the Spanish Chara Radio application was selected. It includes many useful features such as long playlists, automatic level control and firing nine jingles at a time from the hardware numeric keyboard. For jingle music, station ID and effects production we decided to use a separate iMac with Apple's GarageBand. Tuara is in southern Tanzania by the Indian Ocean. It is the center of cashew nut production in Tanzania. Also, this new radio station will serve as an information channel for the Nut Farmers Cooperative Body, handled in practice by Mtukwa Community Media. As soon as the large shipment was in Tanzania, it was time for the designer to arrive on site. The trip went through Amsterdam to Dar es Salaam for an overnight rest. From there, I continued the next morning on a smaller plane to Mtwara, the widespreading city around a peninsula. The luggage was quickly delivered, and then we stepped into the Mtukwa branded Range Rover, where I first met the Mtukwa Corps team led by Fakihi Musa. For starters, we went to the Msemo Hotel. Msemo, previously called the Southern Cross, is in a beautiful place by the sea. At high tide, the waves and the boats come very near to the hotel yard. The hotel includes a meals and breakfast hall, as well as a long beach with fine sand. However, during low tide, the sea retracts quite far from the shoreline. On the front yard there is a big branch tree and the large restaurant area has palms. Every morning we drove from Zemo for almost 10 miles to the radio house in Naliendele.
Naliandela is a small village where most houses are made of red clay bricks. Some houses have straw roofs, while others have corrugated metal roofs. The Ntukwa radio house in Naliandela has been renewed especially for radio production use. In the editorial room in the middle of the building, our first task was to decide which way the computer desks should be installed. A sad surprise was to find that one of the packing cartons had been broken in transit, the metal frame of the wooden rack had been bent and the equipment fallen all over the inside. The steel frame was taken into a car repair shop for straightening. Our building team consisted of three radio workers. Shafi, future Jami FM technical manager, Amua, a skilled editor and sound recordist, and Hassan, a handy soldering and repairman. These boys assembled all the mixers and fastened the modules one by one. A very important part of the team was the veteran radio engineer Elijah Gongwe. The building job included both mechanical installation and manufacture to exact measure of a large number of cables with a soldering station. In addition to the occasional push starting the Land Rover, we suffered from the most usual plague of modern Tanzania, loss of electric power. For that purpose we acquired generators, some of which failed and some of which worked for a time. Getting power again really was an inspiring moment. Three high-quality condenser microphones were installed in the studio room making it possible to connect conversation groups into either control room, together with switchable headphone feeds and talkback. The production control room has two small mixers, with one feeding the other. Thus, we could get enough input channels for the playback machines, two computers and five microphones.
Those controls that ordinary users may not touch had their knobs taken off. The editorial room has six identical computers for writing work and for the playlist construction. There is also an Ethernet switch, the central hub of the local area data network for text and audio file traffic. The air control room has no less than three small mixers, so that all players, the playlist computer and four microphones can all be aired simultaneously. Like in the production room, also here we use analog peak program metering for controlling the levels of the radio program. Outside the air control room in the corridor is the archiving and logging computer, which also serves as a spare on-air machine. The office room was used as a storage during our building work. It also has a computer which is connected to the radio house network. Our working days were long, but the spirit was good. Our first week was spent on installation and then during the second week we started to learn more about practical radio work and technical theory. And I quickly go through what we just spoke yesterday. Why do we edit speech? We want to make the speaking more fluent and we want to have less distractions in the background if there's something that is disturbing the speech, something that is out of place we take it out. The purpose is not to be able to hear what is being said. It's just not the purpose. The purpose is to be able to hear what is being said without trying hard. You have to be able to listen without effort, easily. And everything that distracts you, disturbs you, is bad for concentration of the listener. That's why we take distractions away. Like this kind of piece in the background to get it away. Remove non-essential material. If you would interview me in Jemmy FM transmission about how to build radio stations, I would probably at some stage start to talk about dogs. Because I love dogs. But that's that's not the point why I'm here. And if I talk about dogs, then that's not essential. You would have it up. Or if I talk about my mother. Okay, faster run through time. The, the stories are more condensed and people will be able to concentrate them for the period of time that they are. If the story is very long, the listeners will get bored and they don't want to listen to the end of it. This is this is very boring, this is too tiring, I don't want to listen to it. If you say what you have to say in a clear and concise form, in a short amount of time, you have the best possibilities of getting the message through to the listener. Everybody was eager to participate in the training period, consisting of lectures, printed handouts and hands-on training. After each theory class, we had a practical rehearsal to recap on different interviewing and editing techniques. Among other things, we talked about the shortcut editor, microphone structure,
Waveform Editing, Polar Patterns, and Portable Recording Devices, both digital and analog. The best way to cope with long working days is to eat well. Our meals were delivered regularly, mostly brought directly to the radio house. Together with the hotel breakfast, the good Tanzanian basic food gave strength to carry on. Our tea portions and also some of the meals were had in the canteen across the road, just a nice walking distance away. Tuara is a sleepy country town presenting no special sights to see, which on the other hand is good for the working efficiency. During my Sunday walks I managed to see some parts of the town. In our end meeting we were joined by local radio people as well as Peik Johansson of Vikes. We demonstrated the control rooms and during the last day we even had time to connect the telephones to the control room mixers with cables brought over by Peik and with the assistance of these clever and handy telephone company men. In the center of the picture is the Mtukwa community media lead person, Said Swalah. By then, it was time to move over to the hotel to pack up my very much lighter suitcases and to head for the airport. Once again, I flew first to Dar es Salaam 
and then after a long, warm and relaxing day in the big city, up to Europe towards midnight. The installation and teaching job was complete, worth the effort and well done. Now we are just eagerly waiting for the first public broadcast transmissions of Jami FM to reach the radio listeners.